Up until this point, it seems like the status quo in the Wimby Kid series relatively stayed the same, but things went in a different direction in book number five, The Ugly Truth. Literally the first sentence Greg writes is that it's been almost two and a half weeks since he and his ex-best friend Rally had their big fight. While this fight didn't directly happen at the end of Dog Days, it's assumed to be the aftermath of a bad shore and camping experience between the two. We don't know a whole lot about all the specifics, but what we know for sure is that Greg and Rally are no longer friends, which is apparent throughout The Ugly Truth. While the majority of the book surrounds growing up and experiencing changes, the friendship between these two also seems to be a pretty big focus. Since Greg doesn't rely on too many friends besides Rowley, he wasn't too happy heading into this new school year. In fact, he said that the two of them had a pretty good thing going with their friendship and then drew a picture of Rowley being a servant to Greg, as per usual. You know, it would be cool to see these two hanging out with each other and having fun instead of the constant manipulation, but hey, sociopath Hefley really be like this all the time. When a normal person is trying to find a new best friend, they want someone nice who has similar interests. But when Greg Hefley tries to find a new best friend, he'll just go after people who give some sort of benefit to him like Christopher Brownfield. I hung out with Christopher for the last few weeks of the summer, mostly because he's a really excellent mosquito magnet, but Christopher is more of a summertime friend than a school year friend. This right here pretty much proves how Greg sees everyone else, using them and gaining their companionship only when his life is improved because of it. Even the small act of attracting mosquitoes in the summer is enough for him to befriend Christopher, but of course that guy's only a summer friend because that's the only time period where Greg benefits from him. At one point, Greg thinks so highly of himself that he assumes Rowley's gonna be jealous of his fame, then write an entire book about how I used to be friends with Greg Hefley. Oddly enough, this is kind of foreshadowing Diary of an Awesome Friendly Kid, where it's all about Rowley's personal experiences with his best friend, but I'm not gonna talk about that here because I already did a full video about it and uh, there's some insanely manipulative stuff in there. Anyway, throughout the Wimpy Kid books, it's easy to understand that the best friend relationship isn't balanced in any way, but Greg legitimately thinks that the reason he and Rally didn't make it is because they were equal parts in their friendship. He clearly has a distorted view of the world, especially when dealing with other people. But okay, okay, enough about Rally. we'll get back to him in a bit. Is there any other evidence of Hefley just being an awful person? There's a moment in The Ugly Truth where he and his family were invited to the Snellis house for a special birthday party, and when no one was looking, he dumped some disgusting deviled eggs in a plastic plant. Mr. and Mrs. Snella had no idea where the smell was coming from, so they hired carpenters to take apart the house and figure out what was going on. After never finding the source of the smell and getting tired of it, they moved out. Right away, we have a moment of possible redemption when Greg admits he feels guilty, since that's not typical of him. In past books, he keeps pulling pranks on everyone with no regret. But just when you go ahead and think, oh, maybe he's not such a bad guy after all, he hits us with this. Ever since, I've been trying to figure out how to sneak some deviled eggs into Fregley's house. Yeah, I know Fregley's not the best person around, but to see Greg immediately want to do the same thing to him that he did to the Snells just shows he's not actually feeling regret. Any potential sign of redemption, at least for now, is gone. And we get back to the classic Greg and Rally goodness, which brings out Hefley's true nature the most. Most. At one point, there's a big party going on and both of them are invited, but soon after, Greg realizes that his Uncle Gary's wedding is on the same weekend. The wimpy kid, of course, calls up Rally to try and make sure he doesn't go to the party, explaining that it wouldn't be fair if only one of them gets to go. Luckily, Rally doesn't listen to this manipulation. I got so mad that I hung up the phone. Now do you see what I mean about Rally? That's just the kind of selfish move that makes me glad we aren't friends anymore. <sighs> Once again, Greg proves that he blames everyone and everything for his own actions. He'll do whatever he possibly can to make himself happy, and if others like Rally are trying to do something without him, that's when he gets mad and calls it selfish. You'll notice Greg doesn't shrug it off and say how oh, it's no big deal and he wishes his best friend would enjoy the party, but instead Greg just doesn't admit to being in the wrong. While the status quo of this relationship was changed since the beginning of the book, everything seemed to go back to normal on the final few pages. The two become friends again, but when Greg sees that Rally grew an inch and a half, he hatches up an evil plan for the future. This is another one of those pictures that just perfectly describes the friendship in a nutshell. As of right now, it's looking like the Wimby Kid isn't developing into a better character. Of course, he's funny, but the way he sees the world is much different than the average middle schooler. Anyway, next up in this Inside the Mind of Greg Hefley series is Cabin Fever, widely considered to be one of the best Diary of Wimpy Kid books. It's gonna be pretty cool analyzing it.
But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos. Give a thumbs up and comment below let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.